Have you ever felt? Are you listening? Damn. Hello, fly fish food, fly tying extraordinaires. This is Lance. I want to share with you one of my most productive nymphs. This one's called the Frenchie. This, uh, this little pattern is basically a spin-off of a competition style fly. So there's a, a Frenchie style of fly that's basically a simplified pheasant tail with hot spots. But this particular version is one that I used um, a lot in, the, in my first world championship in Portugal. And uh, this particular variation became known as Egan's Frenchie, if you will. So it's sold through Umqua. Anybody that sells Umqua flies can get it. Um, and this is my favorite color combination of that French style fly. So I didn't invent the style of fly. This just happens to be my favorite version of that style of fly. So anyway, I've got a Hannock 400 hook in the vise. This is a size 14. I use these mostly in 12, 14, and 16. Um, I'm going to tie the fly with, uh, excuse me, let me back up. I've got a, a tungsten slotted bead on the hook as well. This is a 2.8 millimeter bead in gold. You could uh, use silver, you could use copper, or whatever bead you like best, but my favorite one is gold. That's one of my confidence colors. And then it's also important to note that it is a slotted bead to slide over that little 60 degree bend in the hook right here. The counter drilled beads oftentimes don't make that little bend and seat up there properly. So we've got that 2.8 millimeter tungsten bead. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit of lead wire because I mostly do European style nymphing and uh, also dry in a dropper. Uh, I like to have a fair bit of weight built into my fly, so I'm going to add some O and O lead wire. You could also add O and five, or if you wanted to make a heavy twelve, you could use some O two O. I'm going to add about six, seven, eight wraps of this lead wire just to give it a bit more density, and then I'm going to slide that lead wire up into the bead and wiggle it back and forth a little bit while pushing from the back to really seat that lead inside the slot in the bead. Then I'm going to break off the excess here with my fingernail. I've still got a little teeny piece sticking up Then I'm going to use the tip of my scissors and force that piece of lead down. Okay. Next I'm going to tie this fly with red 70 denier UTC. Um, I like to tie this with red because I want to create a collar at the front of the fly that's red. And I don't find that the uh, if I tie it pretty well, I can cover that most of that red up anyway. Even if there's a little red showing, it doesn't matter. But you'll see what I mean here in a second. So I tie it with red thread. I build up a little bit of a ramp of thread right behind the, the lead wire. That holds the lead wire in place and forces it into the bead. Then I've coated the wire with the red thread just to hold the, the wire in place. Then I'm going to move the thread back to the bend of the hook where I'll tie in my tail. The tailing material for this is Coke de Leon in medium pardo or dark pardo. Uh, I like CDL or Coke de Leon because it's got a lot of sheen and a lot of barring, a lot of speckling to it. It's also a very durable fiber. So the, the Frenchies that I saw originally were all tied with pheasant tail as the tail, which as we all know, if you fish the pheasant tail, you know fish will, will eat that just fine. I find they eat this just as well, maybe even better, but this is a lot more durable than the pheasant tail. Usually two or three fish in, and the pheasant tail fibers hanging out as your tail are gone and you're fishing a fly with no tail which the fish probably don't care about for but for my confidence uh, I like to have the tail on there anyhow I'm gonna pull about oh I don't know 10 or 12 of these fibers off of the uh, stem here try and keep them nice and straight and I'm gonna tie them in at the back as my tail so I want to make this about half the length of the shank I'll tie those right on top of the shank then I'm going to get rid of those butt ends. Notice I tied them basically right up to where I had the lead. That will help level out the fly. Next I'm going to add the ribbing. The ribbing in this case is copper wire. In this, uh, for this size I've got size small UTC wire and copper. And again I'm going to tie this copper wire right where the lead ends. I'll tie it in so I'm going, going to basically try and remove that little rise right there. It'll make wrapping the pheasant tail a bit easier when I get to that point have a nice smooth thread base. All right, now we've got the wire in place. Next up I'm going to add the body material which is just some pheasant tail. It's hard to see there because it's dark but this is muskrat gray. Um, anything that's a dyed gray or the original actually used a melanistic pheasant but because melanistic pheasants are a bit hard to come by 
We oftentimes tie them with these darker dyed colors. So a natural pheasant tail will also work, but uh, I really prefer this muskrat gray, especially when you're going to use it to imitate a, uh, a betis nymph. So I'm going to pull maybe oh, five or six, maybe seven or eight of these pheasant tail fibers off the stem, and I'm going to tie them in by the tip. I'm going to capture the tips with the thread right behind where the lead wraps stop again. Then I'm going to wrap the fibers down towards the tail, right? and then I'll migrate my thread back up to behind the bead and I'm now going to throw a half hitch in here to just hold that thread in place. At this point I'm going to use the rotary function of my vise, pull this uh, thread over on the bobbin cradle and I'm going to add some durability to this fly. So one of the disadvantages to pheasant tail is that it's not a very durable fiber. Uh, pheasant tail, although it catches fish really really well, it, uh, it tends not to hold up very well. So one way I found to battle that is to add a little bit of super glue. So I'm going to add just a layer of super glue to the thread, just a really thin layer over the top of the thread before I wrap this pheasant tail in. The next trick is to wrap the pheasant tail the opposite direction that I wrap the thread. Okay? It doesn't really matter for the pheasant tail purpose, but what, what we're going to do is we're going to lock that pheasant tail in with the wire. So I'm going to wrap the pheasant tail the opposite direction I wrap the thread, and I'm going to wrap it all the way up to the bead and I'm going to capture it with the thread. And the reason I opt to do the pheasant tail this direction is I find the pheasant tail is easier to tie off than the wire. The wire, if you tie it the opposite direction as the thread, it's harder to capture it and hold it in place. So I'm, I've now got that, that pheasant tail pinched in place with the thread. I'm going to cut away the excess. And I'm now going to wrap the wire the same direction as the thread, which is now counter wrapping and reinforcing the pheasant tail. So I'll put a fair bit of tension on this wire and just rib it through the body all the way up to the bead. And then I'll capture it with a thread and tie the wire off. One trick with wire is you can wiggle it back and forth, helicopter it sometimes people call it, but just wiggling it back and forth with tension on the thread keeps it from uh, creating, if you cut it I guess, you, you end up with a little spike sticking up and that can cut your thread or gets in the way of your dubbing or We've all had the uh, the uh, instance where we go to whip finish and you, you can't see that little spike of wire down in there and you whip finish, the thread gets shredded and it breaks right at the last moment, the worst possible time, right? So now I've got rid of that, that wire just by holding the thread under tension. And the last step is to add some hot spots. So all of the Frenchies utilize a hot spot. You can tie them in lots of colors. My favorite colors are shrimp pink and UV pink but fluorescent orange or fluorescent chartreuse looks quite nice too. For this particular pattern, the one that's commercially available, and my favorite combination is the UV shrimp pink. So I'm going to add a bit of this hairline UV shrimp pink dubbing to the thread. Once again with dubbing, less is more. We don't need very much of it. I probably even got a little more than I need. Let's see what we've got here. If, we, if I do, I can always pull a bit of it off. Let's, let's back some of that off. I like to keep these hot spots relatively sparse, just enough to create a little bit of a, a contrast in color. So I've got that hot spot in there. Now I'm going to whip finish this red thread. Now here's where I, I like the red. There's something magic about these contrasting colors. I don't know why the fish like them. I wish that I understood that, but I do not. However, I know that they work from lots of experience on the water. So I've got now the contrast of gold, followed by red, followed by shrimp pink, and then the dark body and the Coque de Leon tail. It makes for a neat looking little fly. It's very easy to, to tie. It's much more durable than a regular pheasant tail. And uh, I think you'll find if you try this fly, it'll, it'll basically replace the pheasant tails in your box. They're quicker to tie, they last longer, and honestly I believe the fish like them a lot more. Give this one a whirl, the Frenchie. It's a pretty easy bug. Go catch a fish.